Welcome back, Seth Bling here, and I'm back on the Minecraft server, and I've decided to build something new at spawn. So we're at spawn, uh, it's this gumball machine, <laughs> and it is going to be the site of my new shop. I have a bunch of stuff that I, I think I could probably sell, I, there's some stuff I want to buy, so I decided to build a little shop, and here's like the little pathway, you might ask, well how do you get into the shop? <laughs> And that's what these pressure plates are for, so here we go. So that's what that. Are. Hey, get out! All right, so basically the idea is um, like creepers and stuff can't wander in here, although I guess spiders can. So, <laughs> so that's a little bit of a design flaw, maybe. But, um, but so it's basically a way of having a door without needing a door. There's nothing on the inside yet. Uh, I still have yet to populate that. There's going to be a bunch of chests. It's going to be sort of like a general store. I think I'm going to call it Bling Mart. Uh, up here, there's a bunch of colored sheep. So the idea is from the outside, it looks like gumballs. And it works okay. <laughs> um, I am a little bit worried that all these sheep loaded all the time. I don't know. That's not great for the server. It's not like these few sheep are going to cause a ton of lag. But... Uh, the other thing is, I have my, I have my sheep sounds turned down a little bit. So well, let me come back in the shop. So if I turn, um, it's not good. The uh, uh, sounds. If I turn friendly creatures all the way up, sound is kind of annoying. <laughs> so I don't think I'm gonna keep these forever. I lost it again. I don't think I'm gonna keep these sheep here forever. But uh, at least for the first like week or so, it'll be sort of my grand opening, and I'll keep the sheep up there, and, and they'll look nice. I'll probably replace them with wool. In the back, okay, I've got this temporary staircase. This is how I got the sheep up in there, or at least the first few sheep, and then I bred a bunch. Uh, there's also a lever back here that's like uh, employees only access. <laughs> uh, it, it opens up this little thing. I think it looks kind of cool actually. So you have um, you have the grass block and this block that uh, they get removed. And it's a, it only uses three sticky pistons. Uh, it's it looks a little derpy. It's not like I'd rather have a full Jeb door, but uh, I had very very limited space because the floor is right here, so I, I couldn't do anything. And so this has access to all the wiring for the that staircase thingy, and this is really really sloppy wiring. So I could make it a lot better, but I don't know. It works, so whatever. I'm also going to have, uh, probably the payment chest will be somewhere around here. And I'm going to have hoppers coming from the payment chest. So when people buy things, they'll put diamonds in a chest. And then uh, that'll the hoppers will carry it down, uh, down to a chest here so that I can collect that. And that's not going to be available to the public. Of course, this is not like a super secret entrance down there. But it is at least a little bit hidden by all the tall grass and everything. And it won't be, you know, visible visible to the general public. So I don't know. I, I really like this staircase thing. It's it's basically just um, so this this walkway is a bunch of stairs. So there's a single piston extender for these two, and then a double extender for these. If I go ahead and stand here, we can see it. So it, yeah, I like that. <laughs> Wiring is way more than it needs to be, but whatever. Uh, so this this staircase back here leads up and I think I'm almost I think I have almost enough sheep uh, for the time being I love how they sometimes just start floating out of the <laughs> out of the little glass bulb up here I'm gonna breed them one more time I think uh, just get a few more but just because I wanted to really be full so that the the size of the bowl uh, when when it's this full the sides of the bowl get populated and that's what's visible from the outside all the guys down here aren't really visible so there are a lot of sheep in here and I don't want to yeah I don't want to keep these guys here forever but uh, I'm also trying to use a restricted set of colors uh, so it's like lime green red cyan black white and yellow I think are the colors so if I see any sheep that are different color oh there's a pink sheep get him <laughs> oh, whoops, I got the yellow one. There we go. And there's another one. So I'm trying to just keep them to those set, that set of colors. Just because I looked up a bunch of gumball machines, and that seems to be the colors that are in gumball machines. So there we go. There's the, the gumballs. Um, I'll probably commit genocide on these guys at some point. I guess I can actually go ahead and close this up. So 
Mm, what's the... Actually, I have no way out if I do that. <laughs> uh, okay, no, I know what I can do. Uh, hmm, okay, let's try this. So if I... Let's see if I can do this. Okay, I think I got all of it down there. So now I can... Yeah, sort of ladder my way up. Uh, not that side, there's a ladder on that side. Okay, careful not to spleef myself. There we go. So I'm gonna have to leave some blocks behind. Oh well. <laughs> and then I'll just close it up, and I think that should be good to go. So I'm gonna have to populate the inside of the store. I'm gonna decorate it a bit, put up a sign that says Bling Mart. Um, I'm gonna have to stock it with supplies. I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna sell, so I'm probably gonna be doing a lot of that off camera. But uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun getting this thing going, and I'll finally have a shop at spawn, and I can finally. Uh, sell a lot of the stuff that I've been stocking up. So cool. All right, so I think I need to kill some withers. <laughs> of course, don't I always? Oh, that's not really gonna help. Uh, that's weird. There's no texture on that. Um, so while I'm killing this wither, let me talk about something. Sounds really loud. Um, yeah, so, uh, we just had a meeting, Minecraft meeting, we have them every month, and one of the things we talked about was basically that uh, Goode is the only person that can reset the server when there are problems. If it crashes or whatever, uh, we have to text, text Goode, and, uh, sometimes he's not available and that kind of sucks. Okay, make sure I pick up the Wither Star. Hmm. Yep, you can tell I've been farming Withers. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, got it, yeah. So, I, uh, I'm, appear to be the only person on the server with any sort of Linux administration experience. Not that I've ever really administered a Linux server, but, uh, but I know basically how Linux commands work, and so, uh, I am now an op, and I have access to the server, and it's not out of favorites or anything, or because I had the most subscribers, it's because I have the Linux administration experience. So I'm not going to cheat, I'm never going to go into creative mode or, you know, use the slash give command or anything like that. It's just so that I can restart the server and also so that I can um, do other sort of admin-y type tax tasks, like, for instance, we're going to change the scoreboard. So. Currently, the scoreboard displays the number of deaths everybody has, and uh, and we decided in the meeting that we're going to change that up just because it's said the same thing for the last, uh, I think since the server got reset, which was quite a while ago. So, uh, so we're changing that, and we're changing it instead to player kills. So uh, it's instead of encouraging everyone to hide and <laughs> and not you know, entered the ethos death games and whatever, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna add that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now after I kill these withers. I thought this would be a good time to explain what's going on with the, all that. Uh, Good, Good of course checks, uh, checks the logs, the server logs every once in a while, so he'll be able to verify that I'm not cheating and everything. Uh, but. I don't, I don't know, I think you can trust me not to cheat. <laughs> uh, okay, so, I guess here's as good a place as any, it doesn't really matter. So there's, um, oh, B-Dub said bye, I didn't even see that. I, I must have been farming Wither so intensely, Wither Skeletons. Okay, I probably said, like, Ghast or something when I was talking. I get those things mixed up. Okay, so let's see, I don't need help. Scoreboard, objectives, uh, list. So currently... We have player kills, uh, total kills, and deaths. Um, so I kind of wonder, scoreboard, objectives, list, does this, uh, it's interesting. I thought I could, I thought I could list, I guess I can't list individual, I, I thought I could, I thought this worked. No, I guess it doesn't. Anyway, um, I'm gonna add a new new player kills objective. Uh, player kill player kills two, and that's gonna be type player kill count, and 
I, I'm going to create a new one so that it starts tracking from zero. Um, I don't know. I guess that one probably already, ha already has data in it, but uh, but it would be kind of weird if we started tracking from something other than zero, and we agreed to create a new objective in the meeting. So here we go. And then scored objectives set display. Um, so then there's the list, which is when I press tab, and that's going to be player kills two, and then also um, below the name, and we're going to do players to player kills two. So now I press tab, <laughs> the thing still says zero, because obviously the objective was just created. But uh, you know, if I kill someone, then I'll get I'll you know that'll that'll add one. So everyone's going to be at zero for the time being. I think at this point, since player kills aren't being tracked anymore, I may just add a sword to the death games. Or sorry, since um, deaths aren't being tracked anymore. So that's kind of relieving, actually. Oh yeah, the other thing is I we decided that we were going to uh, create a new uh, uh, deaths death count objective, and we're not going to like add it to any scoreboard display or anything. Uh, let's see, death count, uh, deaths to, oh, it was death, what did they, they called it death list? Okay, I'll just call it death list two, I guess. Uh, and that's going to be death counts, and we'll call it display name will be deaths. So, okay, so basically this is so that if at some point we want to track, like, the player, or, like, the kill-death ratio for players, uh, since, you know, this point right now, uh, we can look at those two objectives and calculate the kill-death ratio. So there we go. Um, so that's it for, for that. I just wanted to get those scoreboard objectives. You know, if you don't know how to make those scoreboard objectives, that's how. It's pretty simple. And I just wanted to explain the fact that I'm op and everything now, so if you see messages that are op only, you'll understand why. And, but yeah, I really... <laughs> Trust me, I'm not going to be abusing that, or not going to be like going into creative mode or anything, and uh, and and uh, you know, <laughs> doing my thing. Okay, so I've got these uh, three beacons or three wither stars now. I'm going to turn them into beacons. They are going to be used. Um, well, two of them are going to be used for the the shop, bling marts. And one of them, okay, so basically two of them are going to be used kind of as a grand opening um, display, and then one of them is going to be actually sold in the shop. But I'm going to I mean, need to go get that set up, so I'll be back, uh, hopefully with all that set up and some chests in the shop. All right, so here's what I came up with, grand opening, and we got the beacons on either side. I went ahead and splurged and used uh, <laughs> diamond for the beacons. I actually have a lot of diamond now. Uh, okay, so the inside is still barren. I'm going to take away these torches because I want to replace them with something else. The nice thing is, uh, above, actually, the, the sunlight shines through, so during the day we actually get nice sunlight in here. Um, so, the first thing I want to do, I think, is put in the payment chest. So that's going to be right over here. It's going to be centered on the wall. Well, I could put it near the entrance, actually. Um, but I think I want to put it over here. So this is going to be the payment chest. I'm going to put a hopper underneath that because I want that to funnel down into a chest down here. So let's see. Uh, I guess I can just do this. And there we go. And then hopper, hopper, and then, oh, whoops, that was the, okay, no, 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 we're good. So then the trap chest goes here. So the idea is, um, hmm, I might actually want to put something else underneath this spot so that it doesn't stand out. I'll have to figure out. Maybe a cauldron would work. Actually, yeah, let's try that out. Let me just cra go craft a cauldron. I think, it, I think it'll work. Although, if, if I'm going to spend five iron, or is it... No, there's no way I should do that. <laughs> just make another... Um, just make another hopper, I guess. Yeah, I'm not sure what else looks like that. I think everything else that looks that has the same texture looks um, looks like uh, um, sorry is made out of iron. Okay, so get rid of that, and we'll put that in there. Okay, so anyway, um, it's not the right kind of chest. So th since it's a redstone chest, you'll be able to put your diamonds in. 
I think it got picked up by the system. You'll be able to put your diamonds in and they won't get pulled out until, you know, you close the chest. So that'll be nice to, you know, oh, I needed to pay 10 diamonds. Okay, I'll put in 10. Oops, I put in the whole stack. Make sure I put in 10. So that'll be, that'll be nice. But then those go away so other people can't just wander in and take the diamonds. Although not that the access panel in the back is <laughs> super hard to get access to. Okay, so we've got... Uh, space here. So what I'm going to do, um, so I'm going to put chests like here and here, and then, oh, actually no. I guess I'm going to do here, here, and then I'll have a two gap, and then here and here. But I, I need lighting in here too, so I'm going to go ahead and actually, um, I'm going to go ahead and, yeah, I'm going to drop in glowstone right here. And we're going to put glowstone under the spots that the chests are at. So that'll provide lighting to the room, but it won't, uh, won't have the ugly glowstone texture everywhere. So it's going to be like that. And like that. And then I'll stack them up. Like so. And then I'm going to label them all. Um, I'm not sure. I think actually what will be nice is I could do like um, a sign on this side. Uh, that says like how what the price is for the items in the chest and then I could do an item frame that kind of displays what's in the chest so hmm, I don't actually have any item frames on me but I do have signs so for instance for uh, let's see for this chest I'm gonna be 64 diamonds per item so this is gonna be for my beacon uh, I just spent like several hours trying to get a single beacon so uh, I'm gonna take a stack of diamonds. There are definitely people that need beacons a lot. I, I don't know. I just, if I'm gonna keep selling beacons, I feel like I need to charge a lot for them. But maybe that is overpriced. I don't know. The thing is, I don't know what what good prices are for a lot of things on the server. It's a little hard to tell what people will pay and and how many people you know will offer beacons. You know, will somebody actually undercut me if I say 64 diamonds per beacon? Um, I don't know. So then each one of these is going to have its own sign that'll say how much the items in the chest cost, and then I'll have the item frames over here that, uh, that sort of display what's in the chest. So I'll maybe, I don't know what I'll put in here actually, because I don't want to put a whole beacon in, in the item frame, but um, maybe I'll put a diamond just to signify that it's a really expensive item. And then so diff different, uh, the different chests will house different prices. So you'll see what I mean when I stock them up. But uh, I guess let me let me get to that. All right. So I think I am about done with it for now. Uh, I've done a little bit more. Welcome to Bling Mart. I got signs on here so that uh, people will know that it's my my building because uh, there's no other way to tell unless they you know watch my video or whatever. Okay, so I added some more of these payment chests. I added some more signs. Uh, okay, so we I actually had to switch around the way signs and item frames worked because um, I realized that signs were gonna be, weren't going to be able to go next to each other like this, like item frames are. So we've got the beacon. That's 64 diamonds per item. I don't know. I might drop that price at some point, but we'll see. Uh, two diamonds per stack in this chest. So... These efficiency four unbreaking three shovels. Um, I mean, it takes one diamond to make it, but getting you might get a bad shovel. So when you enchant, so there's some risk to enchanting. So these are the ones that came out good, and some charging extra. Uh, one diamond per stack. We've got a bunch of cactus. Those are for my cactus farm, and a bunch of ice. Those are for my ice farm. So. Uh, those are pretty easy for me to get, but not everyone else has the infrastructure that I do, so hopefully I can charge a little bit of a premium for that. Uh, three diamonds per stack for leather, slime balls, and let's see, there's these partially used diamond boots, and then feather falling, uh, and these and these have feather falling. Uh, then there's these feather falling books, and then an unbreaking three pickaxe. So uh, I don't mind just getting the diamonds back for this one. And then this one's five diamonds per stack. We got a lot of redstone blocks. I get a lot while I'm branch mining or whatever. And then these the silk touch diamond axe. So that's what I'm selling. Now on this wall I have things that I'm purchasing. 
so hopefully this works out and people understand what I mean. Um, there's five chests that have things I'm purchasing. So like five diamonds per stack of ironing it. And there's a picture of an ironing, ironing it. And then there's five, um, five diamonds in each of these slots. So, uh, so I'm purchasing up to nine stacks of ironing it's for five diamonds each. And then eight diamonds per looting three book. So I'm only purchasing one of those. Uh, eight diamonds per silk touch book. Purchasing two silk touch. Three diamonds per stack of quartz block. Oh. Whoops. Uh, let's get some more diamonds in there. Okay, so three diamonds per stack of quartz block. I have almost no quartz, and there are people who have spent a lot of time mining that, so... Um, I don't know if that price will work, but we'll see. And three diamonds per Unbreaking 3 book. Uh, I like Unbreaking 3 books a lot, because you can apply them to things that don't normally get Unbreaking, like armor. So... It'd be nice to have a few of those. So that's pretty much what I'm buying and selling for now. I actually might add some more stuff real soon here, but uh, you know, just for the sake of getting the video done, I wanted to show you guys what it's going to look like in the shop. Um, I might spruce this up a little bit on the inside at some point. I don't know. I think it really goes flying when you break it, doesn't it? And I have I have one stack in each, or sorry, one chest in each of these uh, sections where I can basically have room for expansion. So. That's nice if, if I want to add something. And then payment chests, I added a little ender chest here because, well, I basically I find myself going over to the dock shop over that way and then I get there and there's something for sale that I want and then I don't have any diamonds in my inventory. So maybe this will help people, you know, if they if they have the itch in to spend, <laughs> uh, maybe they'll be able to spend a little bit easier. So that's nice. But otherwise, I think it's about finished up. Um, I think I'll keep the grand opening sign and the sheep and, and whatever and the beacons over here for maybe about a week, but we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully I sell lots of stuff and am able, able to purchase the stuff that I want. That'd be cool. All right, so one last thing before I close out the episode. This is what the cactus ended up look like, looking like once I skinned the whole thing. Um, all the little spikes over there are basically nether brick slabs. They're in pairs, and they're shifted up by half a meter so that uh, mobs can't actually spawn on top of any of them because... All the top surfaces are slabs, so that's pretty cool. Uh, they can actually spawn on the top of that cactus uh, with the spots where there aren't slabs, but I don't really care because I'm not going to go up there, and if they fell down, they'd die, so I don't really care about that. So I think it looks really awesome. Happy with it. The only thing is, apparently, uh, Goode's mine crack, or sorry, UHC monument is like over, in the, over here, and I didn't realize it, but he was planning on extending it out this way, uh, out like, I don't know, about this far or something. He didn't mark it off or anything, and um, I guess he mentioned it to the other Minecrackers before I joined, so I really had no way of knowing that he was going to be extending that out, unless I, you know, watched all of his videos, but I don't have time to watch every video <laughs> from every Minecracker, so it, it'll be a problem when he gets his, his UHC monument over here. Uh, I don't know. The cactus might have to come down. We might move it. I'm not really sure. I'm a little bit sad about that. Basically found that out after I posted my video of this. So that's that. Uh, so this, the ice tray here is pretty much full. Um, this is why I'm buying a Silk Touch <laughs> uh, pick or a Silk Touch book because I don't, I'm almost out of Silk Touch to harvest this. Anyway, I uh, just wanted to show you the progress on the cactus and what that looks like. I, I'm really proud of this, what this looks like. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Thanks for watching.